So we're near the end of March, uh, almost start of April here, so just about the end of our water year. And this area that was burned by the Woolsey Fire, uh, this China, China Flats area here uh, in Oak Park, um, pretty good recovery. We've been really, really fortunate this year. We've had a, a huge amount of rain, but it wasn't really ever uh, in any massive deluges. So we had a lot of rain spaced out over some significant time periods. We did have some significant storms. We did have some atmospheric rivers that came and hit our area, but thankfully we saw no significant um, erosion or lost. The vegetation is recovering pretty well all over the region. Um, and this is almost ideal. It's, it's hard to think of a, a better uh, situation here. So our herbaceous stuff is, is coming back and we have a lot of, the, there's different patterns on the ridge lines versus the, the flat areas versus the, um, the, the riparian corridors, but um, overall good, good response. In some areas, just because of the intensity of the burn and the dryness of the vegetation beforehand, um, like these uh, laurel, like, like, like these, these woody shrubs, um, little evidence of re-sprouting, little evidence of, of new shoots coming out. Um, in other areas that, were, that are wetter before the fire, as well as wetter post-fire uh, the last few months, um, we have seen there um, uh, so, some, some re-sprouting and some good uh, uh, restarting from the stumps and the stems and the underground uh, rhizomes and tubers and things, but these guys um, were pretty heavily hit and they were pretty completely burned it looks like. So clearly some of them will recover and there are a few baccarus, there are a few uh, coyote bush and things around that, that are, have, have greened up and are doing okay, didn't completely die, but, but uh, in general uh, pretty nice recovery uh, so far in the wake of the Woolsey fire and the vegetation communities are, are pretty much ideal for securing the soil, ideal for forage for grazers, ideal for pollinators. Um, they're coming up, we're seeing different clumps of, of onion and soap plant and, and, uh, and uh, uh, while well, cucumber and things that are great pollination sources early in the spring so that our uh, bees and, and other insects can get some pollen, get some nectar and keep going. Um, starting to see uh, some more bird activity uh, in and around these areas, particularly in the riparian corridors, and so they're coming back. So overall, uh, pretty nice. Again, uh, the, the fairly consistent pattern following the water availability in the wake of the Woolsey Fire here in uh, 2019 now. Lots of grasses, wild cucumber, um, re-sprouting of some of our woody species like this laurel sumac, um, uh, some, some carrots and other uh, families popping up here on the very um, proximate to the stream channel, uh, very wet sides of our burned uh, slopes. On these areas that are not so much in a creek channel, more flat, plain uh, type terraces, um, we are seeing a good amount of growth here too, but these tend to be more weedy. So these aren't as much uh, native, aren't as dominated as much by the natives. And instead, we're seeing a lot more. Uh, you know, we do have our, cu our, our cucumbers and things, but um, we're also seeing a lot more asters, a lot more uh, thistles and, and weeds, a lot more areogonum, not more, uh, 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 areogonum, whatever, uh, uh, crane's beak, bird's beak, whatever we call that. Not bird's beak, it's crane's beak. Um, and so here, much more uh, mustards right there, much more of the weedy type stuff popping up um, in this post-fire uh, plain. While much of our shrub community was completely toasted, quite literally, um, we d not everybody was gone. We have some cowdy bush, other shrubs, other coastal sage scrub woody species, um, in particular on our rocky outcrops. So if we look right here, um, we can see that this area has very thin soils. So uh, that translated into not much grass or other um, uh, uh, asters, other annuals here. You can really see it nicely right here. So once we get off this, this little uh, mound into more deeper soils that retain more water, better for the mostly invasive species. There's a scrub jay just flying by. Um, uh, right here, uh, not a lot of, uh, as much heat. So clearly these shrubs here all burn, but if we look close, we see there's a lot of regrowth and re-sprouting. And so these guys were, were burned, but not to the point of uh, gone forever. 
and so we see a lot of this this re-sprouting either down at the step out of the the basal area or in some cases right at the um, tips if the stems weren't entirely nuked so again um, the the, the overall physical conditions, water availability, uh, uh, soil depth, etc., can explain a lot in terms of the vegetation recovery we're seeing here. One thing we sometimes see in the wake of fires is the um, explosion of small populations, micro populations of various uh, plants that, for whatever reason, because of heat avoiding or because of their ability to re sprout or whatever, uh, can pop up really quickly and dominate. So, for example, right here we see a bunch of uh, uh, mustard, probably a little shaky here, I'm zooming in pretty far, but this little mustard right there that, uh, you know, obviously the seeds in the seed bank weren't nuked, they've gone crazy. Um, right above it, we have some, not sure what that is, could be lupin, um, but we have a, a nice patch of some wildflowers up there. So, immediately after these fires, we do get this, um, these potential extreme winners um, in terms of the lottery, in terms of the competitive lottery that take off. Now over time, we expect that uh, either those things, if they're invasive, they'll just explode and continue to occupy more and more space, or more typically, they'll sort of die back to the background patchwork of the vegetative community as other species come in, competitive dominance start to come in, and they lose their initial um, uh, uh, foothold that they gained by the clearing out of all the vegetation that um, our ridge lines, our crest lines, where we have the lowest water uh, levels, because obviously the soils are the, are the lowest and you don't have runoff going into these areas. We have many more grasses dominating like this, uh, Bromus diandris and various species of brome. Um, and this, while we do have other things, we do have some a soap plant and obviously some mustards as well, another disturbance-loving plant, annual, invasive annual. Um, really, uh, the grasses seem to come into their own in these driest areas.